Welcome back to News Talk. Continuing our conversation now with WTOP's Noah Frank as we continue to talk about the Nationals and now the season that was. Yes, we have games left, but as we've been talking about these meaningless games that now come up, we have this one last one at home makeup game. Expected to walk away with the division. That was really the talk at the beginning of this season. And instead, now not even in the playoffs. What series of events? did or didn't happen to get us in this situation? Well, there were, I think, 145 national baseball writers who, between ESPN and SI and all these outlets, who made predictions on, on baseball right. for this year. And 144 of them picked the Nationals to win the division. One picked the Marlins, who <laughs> finished with 90-plus you know, yeah. losses. But, uh, I mean, everyone just assumed that they were going to win because the talent level was there. Uh, and they had a ton of injuries, and that did not help. That, that you know, let the Mets hang around. Uh, but the Mets were a really incomplete team, and their offense was dreadful in the first half, and they had bullpen issues, and, and they were still not, clearly not as good as the Nationals. The Mets went out and addressed their issues at the trade deadline. The Mets set up their pitching rotation for the coming out of the All-Star break so that their top three guys would face the Nationals in the, those first three games. And the Mets just kind of sat around. I mean, they, they, didn't, they didn't acknowledge the fact that they were in a race that was never more than a couple of games in either direction right. throughout most of the summer. They just seemed to sort of always assume that, that everything was going to be fine without really, you know, any proof that that was going to happen. Uh, you know, bringing this full circle back to Papelbon, that they, they go and they get Jonathan Papelbon, when they already had a, a Drew Storing, you know, being one of the best closers in baseball, it's not that they didn't need bullpen depth, but there were a lot of other options that they could have gone to. People who are better than Papelbon, just objectively as closers right now, who are, you know, in the prime of their careers, who are also impending free agents, your Craig Kimbrells and your Aroldis Chapmans, but that would have cost money that ownership wasn't willing to add on as far as payroll in the middle of the season. Uh, they could have gone out and gotten Tyler Clippard back. They, and uh, you know the A's had Tyler Clippard and Ben Zobers, mm -hmm. who would have addressed two huge needs that they could have gotten in one fell swoop, but that would have involved more money and possibly prospects that they didn't want to part with. But this was their window. I mean, this this is there's a mini window of, of this sort of four-year mini Nationals era that's closing. You're losing Ian Desmond. You're losing Jordan Zimmerman. Uh, Doug Fister looks like he's maybe at the end of his rope anyway. But I mean, you're losing a lot of guys. Do not expand a free agency, and. It's, there's a lot of unknowns going into next year that you thought were knowns this year. You thought you, you had everything in, in place right. more than any team could have hoped for going into a season, and that's not going to be the case moving forward. You were just mentioning those big names that so many people are now talking about as we get towards the end of the season and free agency and what happens to this team and, and how many of them uh, are not part of this team next year. What key pieces and who do you think they really need to try and keep as part of this Nationals organization? Well, I mean, you have a couple more, you'll have one more year of Strasburg under control. You'll have Harper for a couple more years and Rendon. And, and these are the, the better rocks. These are your, your star key right. players, hoping they all stay healthy, obviously, um, which Harper did for the first time this year, and he's going to be the National League MVP. I mean, you have the best player in the National League on your team, which is a step ahead of every <laughs> other team just you know, out of the gates. Uh, you know, th there's there's good signs in in, in Trey Turner, who who looks like he's you know he could be a, le a legitimate major league shortstop. Uh, Michael Taylor's taken you know great yeah. leaps and bounds this year. Uh, never should have been hitting leadoff, but <laughs> he, the guy can cover. He can, he's already a better defensive center fielder than Denard Span is. He already covers more ground out there. He's got pop. He, he, you know, he could be a 20 home run, 20 steal guy like Desmond's been. I mean, I think you can expect Ian Desmond like production, and maybe not what you think of as Desmond this year, but over the course of his career Great. from a guy right. like Michael Taylor uh, playing center field. I mean, there are pieces. There, you, know, you have some aging guys like Worth and Zimmerman who you just don't know how much more you're going to get out of them, but uh, they do have some good pitching prospects coming up. Joe Ross looked really good uh, in, in spurts this year. You have Lucas Giolito, who's arguably the top pitcher in, in baseball in, in terms of the prospects on the farm, who... You know, probably by mid-season or, or the end of the season next year, we'll, we'll be in the, in the rotation. So there's there's reason to look ahead and be hopeful, but but not necessarily as a favorite. You'd have to think right now, not that you need to handicap this right now, but probably the Mets are, are the the favorites going forward because they're going to have the five young pitchers under control starting next season, and and the Nats are going to have more question marks. And we'll continue to watch those as well. As we look forward, we're looking forward to Sunday. Washington Redskins back at it after a, after a loss at, against the Giants on Thursday. There was all of this 
hope, and as there continues to be around the, the a beginning of a season for the Washington Redskins, uh, of, of where this team goes and, and the quarterback controversy, and now we've heard there is there is no controversy, and Kirk Cousins is our guy, and, and things looked so great week two, and we had a short turnaround to week three, and, and the pieces didn't all fall back into place again. Where do we get consistency? How do we find consistency within this team in terms of Game one, we were productive, but we didn't win. Game two, we were productive, but we we did win. And game three, it seemed uh, sort of we came off the tracks a little bit. We're back in another division rival playing against the Eagles on Sunday. What do you expect? Uh, the, now, they played the Eagles pretty tough last year, you know, uh, in, in both those games. But it's a problematic matchup if you fall behind early. The, 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 the whole sort of foundation of the new line, the new the new management, the new everything, it was, hey, let's, let's get back to the ground game. Let's get back to these sort of old generation teams where we run the ball, we control the clock, we beat up the other team on, uh, at the line of scrimmage. Right. And give our defense a rest. Right, versus, exactly. Yeah. Keep the defense off right. the field, limit the amount of chances you know, to, to make mistakes, and, and limit the amount of throws, honestly, that Kirk Cousins has to make, especially long throws down right. the field. And, and if you can get ahead, if you can do that, if you can sort of impose your will, which they really did against against the Rams. I mean, that was and, and honestly, they did against the Dolphins to to a large degree until things kind of came apart. But but the the problem was that if you fall behind, suddenly you open yourselves up to, to the same traps as as were there before. I, I think there's something just like two and eight now when Kirk Cousins throws an interception in a, in the start. I mean, that's it's basically if he if he throws a pick, you're going to lose and that's a tough place to be in, and that's a tough place to, to know that, well, if we make one mistake, you know, we really have to have everything go right. I, I saw a really good breakdown uh, after the Rams game of how their sort of zone blocking schemes attacked that 4-3 that defense in a way where they just, there's just too many bodies. It's just a, a numbers game of right. they had more blockers and, and the Rams weren't committing people to the line. It was, I mean, it was a really nice detailed explanation of how it worked. And then the very next week, you saw the adjustment to it, and you saw that 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 they aren't going to just do that every game because everyone has access to the same film right, and can right, figure this stuff right. out and adjust. So they're going to have to. I mean, they're going to have to have wrinkles that they're going to have to lean on people to do stuff that they don't necessarily want them to do. Some more play action or some more, you know, just just ways to to keep the defense from being able to crowd eight or nine guys to the line of scrimmage. And against a team like Philadelphia, you know, that throws the ball a ton and, and is, wants to get up and, and go and, and, you know, the that sort hurry of up offense, Chip Kelly yeah. Yeah, methodology, which is sort of the antithesis to, to, to what well, Washington does. Generous. It's, you know, I mean, I, I, I'm interested to see moving forward, can they sort of impose their physical will on, on teams? Can they control it? Uh, they did it once. It's, it's if, if, they can, if they can keep making the little adjustments game to game, uh, you know, there's a chance, but but I, I just we lo we looked at this team preseason and we said this is a five or a six win team max probably just because the talent level isn't quite there yet. We'll pause you right there. We will continue to watch ahead of the game. We'll be back with a program note right after this.